Okay, everybody, it is upon us. This is the feature from the Cup Carts North America Grand Nationals. This is Grand National 6. This is the year 2022. It's probably like October 1st in this video or 2nd. I forget the dates, but the uh, overall, for me, it was a four-day event. It was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and it was right at the end of September. So, as you saw, we were sitting on the area between... Turns one and two, they brought the entire field out, went down through the uh, starting grid, through the announcements and the broadcast, did a few driver interviews, uh, made a little extra special for us, a little bit cooler than just you know pulling straight out of the um, the grid area, the typical you know the uh, standard grid area. So if you've seen the previous three videos, I finished the last uh, heat in 22nd position. This was not a progressive type deal, so whatever ground I made up in that, I did not start this feature in 22nd. There was some mathematical equation that went on, and using my finishes from heats 1, 2, and 3, and maybe some passing points, I ended up starting this race in 29th position. I still think uh, we might have lost one cart over the weekend, so we were starting 37 carts, so I've got... Eight cards behind me if I can actually do the math in my head correctly. So the 23 up there on the front right, he was one of the guys I pitted with. That's Dan from the Beyond the Carts channel. He has video from all of these same races. Uh, you can see me in some of them. But, uh, and then his brother Scott is further up. I think Scott started around 20th or 22nd. Somewhere around there. He's the number 13. But we're coming around. This is it, man. All the marbles right here. Um, you know, uh, I want to be cautious around these first turns and not, don't want to get a penalty. You know, I will stay in my tram lanes or tram between my tram lines. I just don't want to get wiped out on these first three or four corners. And I preferred being on the outside, being on the right-hand side. But we're off. I'm taking it easy. Got a decent amount of carts behind me. I get through... Uh, Turn one, although I give Dan a, a pretty, uh, what I consider a somewhat healthy bump right there. I didn't want to bump him that hard, and then hey, here we go. Just what I did not want to happen, happened. A couple carts up in front of me touched wheels, and one of them went around. There was already somebody else that was just sitting there backwards. And, um, and you know, in, in, in an effort to avoid this, I ended up locking him up enough that I did somewhat of a spin, but I got quickly underway. When I looked at race monitor, that was like about a 9 or 10 second um, deficit I'm starting with right now. And this put me back in a 32nd or 33rd position, I think. So I don't have very many people behind me. And right off the bat, now I do have 16 laps, which is, you know, this, this race is going to be a 20 minute uh, race with the lap times. Now the 12, I think he might have been one of the ones that got turned around. And I believe he started much more towards the front. And at this point, I'm, I'm sticking with him halfway decent. I don't really realize that he's one of the faster guys, or, or at least had been further up in the grid. Although I had not driven around him in the previous heats. And then I think, I think it's the 610 right behind me, I think is the number on it. Uh, but I talked to that driver quite a few times in between the races. He's uh, friends with the Beyond the Cart guys, Dan and Scott, so he had been over to our pit area, and I talked to him between races because... At times, we're relatively close to each other in the grid. And he's a local um, driver at um, Newcastle for their KRA series. But he's all over the back of me. He was, you know, he was at t most of the times a little faster than me and finished a little bit in front of me in most of the races, unless he had a mishap or something like that. But again, I'm not doing too bad in, in closing back up on this number 12 here and there. This is the last day of the race. By now, I've got a decent amount of laps under my belt. I'm not really having to think ahead about what turn is coming. I just, I know what's coming automatically at this stage. It's burned into my head. And there are sections where I feel like I, I have pretty good speed. And now right there I just screwed up and trying to, you know, I don't know. I should have maybe hit the 12 a little straighter so that he didn't squiggle around a little bit, which caused me to ease up just a hair and the 610 just blew right on past me but we've caught other traffic and so you know I had a, 
I was in action pretty much this entire race, I thought. There was always somebody right in front of me. I wasn't just driving around in no man's land. And I had to watch a lot to see how... You know, you, you'll see uh, the guys in front of me are bumping and touching a lot. So if one of them loses their... You know, loses a little control and gets squirrely, I've got to be able to react. Now I was able to get under right there, and now I need to close back up on the 6, 10, and the 12. I was starting to like this corner here. It would seem, you know, at least to my eyeballs, that I was able to close up on people through these areas. Now, obviously, if I was behind the guys that were up front winning the race, um, it wouldn't look the same, but... These are the people that I have to, you know, gauge off of right now. So my goal, you know, when you're in the back, you just have to try to knock them off one at a time. And I think with the 610 having gone, well, I think I'm still in 32nd place at this point of the race. But we're only like two laps in, so there's a lot left to happen in this race. I'm out there, as I mentioned earlier in the, some of my other videos. I don't know, I've, my I had a ghost racing do my motor it performed fine all weekend I didn't really tinker around with it that much uh, change the air mixture just a little bit you know just turn that screw a little bit on the carb uh, nothing too nothing too uh, outlandish but I seem to have you know to me enough power you know I'm, I'm hitting the uh, rev limiter here and there didn't blow up wasn't spewing oil or anything like that so you know it looks like I'm gonna make it through the season with no issues on my uh, ghost racing prepped motor as you can see I am starting to reel the 12 in I'm taking slightly different lines around this stuff you don't have to take the exact same line every time to be fast you can uh, vary it and I think we're closing in on a group of one two three three carts up there. The 610 is obviously he's put a little distance on me but through these corners I am slowly but surely pulling the 12 back in. Now that group, you know, here they come. I was getting a little faster through that, you know, through the Monza turn and I guess a little faster through the cut through right there but for me the strongest area for you know the, the, the place that I seem to really pull people in was around these corners here once I got used to you know going around a corner at that speed and just practicing keeping it completely nailed you know I, my car pulled really strong through these turns and then taking um, you know, a tight inside line right through there and keeping it out wide. I just, man, I'm just reeling dudes in through here. So now, boom, I got a huge crowd in front of me. And I'm just, I came up on them hot right there. Again, I, I don't think I touched the 12, but I just, you, you know, I just went a little out of the line instead of hitting the brakes. I don't really want to knock my momentum down by hitting the brakes. I contemplated the move that I'd seen a lot of people do right there, but I just didn't have the run. I didn't get inside of him to try to just go straight and duck under back there. Now I'm hoping that, um, for me, my best spot to try to make a pass is usually coming out of, wait, see, one. Going around, I guess, turn, wait, one, two. Three, around, in between tw turns three and four is where uh, my momentum is usually going pretty good and I've been able to stay flat out through these corners right here so once I make this right right here I seem to I seem to usually start to roll up on people and then you know around this left as well but hey everybody's in a nice little line right there and I didn't roll up on them that fast but they all break checked up they, they breaked up a little bit before I would have so I had to get on. Uh, I had to get off the gas. But you know, for me, this is a heck of a lot of fun right now. I do, you know, use sometimes when you're more towards the back, as I have been. There's just nobody around to race. You're just out there logging laps. You're not really gaining a whole lot of knowledge because you don't see other people taking different lines, and you know, you it, it's all input. When you see somebody pull away from you in a corner, you know that. 
obviously you should be able to do whatever they're doing and so you're trying to figure out what that difference was you know, did they go around the, did they just roll the corner harder or did they break sooner and then you know try to power out of the corner it's all stuff that gives you um, you know it just gives you data to try to get yourself faster but if you're driving by yourself you can't really tell you don't have uh, all the same visual cues in front in front of you now my buddy Dan I will if you've seen his video the guy in the 23 right at the start that was up there in front of me he got caught up in the, caught up in that um, turn three mishap, and while trying to avoid one of the spun carts, he accidentally clipped it a little bit and bent his axle. He was out just like that. He could, his cart was vibrating so bad there was just no way he could drive it around. Like right now, I have a very very slight little. My axle is not 100% straight, but I don't notice it at all when I'm driving, so I don't really care. Um, I'll get my axle straight once the season's over, but. Uh, the um, the amount that 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 is that it's off is, is so minimal that it's not you know anything I'm going to worry about. So we knocked off another car right now, and again I still have everybody right in front of me, and we got by another guy right there. So now I think I'm probably up around 30th position. Let me check the race monitor and see what it says. So yeah, I do quite a few laps here in 30th position. And the 610, you know, like I said, he's pretty fast. We're able to run up on a lot of these carts pretty quick. It, it's just getting around them is the hard part. So, yeah, he's going to shoot to get around this, um, this cart right here. I don't know what the number is. And, you know, once we clear a cart, they're usually gone off the back. Uh, I don't, you know, I've got two guys a decent ways back on my rear-facing camera. Well, maybe that is it. I can't see, you know. It's one bad thing about my uh, editing software. The preview portion of it that I'm watching right now, it is not uh, high definition, and it's shrunken down, so I can't read that cart number. But that is probably cart 12 now that I think about it. That is right in front of the 610. So we've caught back up to the 12. All in all, so I will say this also for those that are watching that might not be into karting yet. Um, you know, you can do a lot of this without really breaking the bank. The Yellow 206 class is uh, relatively affordable. If you can find some used equipment out there and, um, you know, find maybe a used motor, obviously one of the things to look out for is make sure it's the correct, it's got the correct uh, seal on it. There's some old ones out there that will look just almost like the, um, I guess, the legal motor now, but they won't be legal. You'll get DQ'd in some of these things because it's um, it's just too old. But you know, you find a used motor, find a used chassis, and just get yourself on out to the track. Like I, fortunately for me, this is pretty local, this uh, national event. But I was able to. Uh, you know, I ended up getting an Airbnb that was close by and just some place I could go crash at night, sleep, take a shower in the morning and get back to the track. It was fairly close. Uh, it didn't break the bank. It was like 70 bucks a night. And, you know, it's a lot of fun to be had out there if, if you know, racing is something that you want to get into. And you can, you can be, you know, somewhat uh, competitive. I mean, I'm beating some people. My lap times ended up uh, getting better all weekend long. And you know, I'm not, you know, I, I don't have a $5,000, $6,000 go-kart. I stick everything in the back of a pickup truck and take it to the track. Now, of course, I would obviously like to have a newer, um, newer chassis and an enclosed trailer and that kind of stuff. And, you know, that'll come with time as I... Uh, as I race a little bit more, but uh, it's not necessary. You don't have to have it to get out and have some fun and do this stuff. So we've got ourselves a nice little four uh, four cart train going right here. We've got then I think the 35 is right up there, and that's the other cart that's in the mix. We 
again the corners I'm kind of coming up pretty good on these corners but they're stretching you know they're getting all they're getting out of the corners pretty well and uh, getting getting a little stretched out on me but I'm hoping we can get in a nice tight group here pretty soon and with the way the 610 was going through here you know I was hoping that I could follow him if he was to make a move I was going to I wanted to be close enough to him to be able to just follow his move uh, that's what that's the benefit sometimes if, if someone's in front of you and they um, they drop down and take the inside line of, on something if you're right on them there's that doesn't give the guy on the outside any opportunity to get back in line and right now I know that this is my well at least I thought I was gonna close the gap on him right there but I didn't really but I'm hoping that uh, I'll zoom back up on him down here when we hit this uh, turn five I believe it's called I was kind of trying to diamond that, I guess, is what you would call it back there. And this is probably around the time where I get my fastest lap. I did get a lap in this race in the six, 116s. I got a 116.8, which was my fastest lap of the whole event. Again, most of your... Most of your winners are running in the low 115s. Every now and then they get a probably a really good draft or a good bump and they get into the 114s. But under general race conditions, most of the most of the top guys were, were pulling laps in the 115s. Now right there, I thought about it. I just, I just totally screwed myself up. He dropped, the 610 dropped the wheel in the dirt. I got up alongside of him. And that was the first time I was trying to really go too wide through that cut through section. And I just didn't do it right. I think I kind of backed out to let the 610 back in because, you know, the last portion, you have to turn left to get out on the straight, and it, I just was, you're not set up at all correctly to do that if you're going too wide through that and you're the one on the inside. So they stretch me back out again. But I think we are starting, to, yep, we're starting to run down another two go karts, it looks like. And we are getting towards the end, and I think, um, I think those two carts up there are some of the guys I race with locally, the number 84 and the number 151. Uh, I've raced those guys a decent amount of times at the um, OVKA or down there at MCC, um, Motorsports Country Club of Cincinnati. And I think they both might have started behind me, but they, um, they did not get into any trouble at all in that first lap. I think that was the 610. I don't know who that was uh, that went back off and I got back past him. I think uh, that's the 35 right in front of me. Again, we're starting to, you know, we're starting to get a little group back up coming up up here. So, you know, looking ahead, I see one, two, three. I see four positions that I want to try to get before the race is over. Just look at it. it. Doesn't look like the 35 has his tires stretched out like the vast majority of us did. I had uh, much wider rims on on the back, so my, you know, back two tires are kind of stretched a little bit. Uh, but I was going to try that move. Didn't really work out. I've seen many a other video of people pulling that one off, and I just didn't do it. But looks like the 12 caught up to two carts in front of him, and I'm, I'll see, I screw up right there. And then the 610 gets back past me. I might have been able to hold him off had I not done that. So, and as you can see, um, little errors cost big on the track. Although I did keep my foot in it pretty good driving in the, in the grass there, so I didn't lose a ton of distance, but man, you know. It doesn't take much, and then you're just, you know, you got to start, you almost have to start all over again to start taking the little bites out lap by lap. Now, fortunately, with those five cards up there, if they all catch each other, there's going to be some jostling. They will slow down a little bit. Because, you know, we all realize we are getting more towards the end of this race, and 
Uh, moves need to be made if you're going to try to improve your position. You, time is running out. I'm able to pick up a little bit of distance there. The lap times really haven't fallen off. I think I stayed pretty consistent in the low 117s, high 116s. Again, I think my first laps of the weekend were like in the 119s, so practice pays off. Seat time definitely pays off. So you see some of them up there trying to make some moves. And I don't know, coming through those turns right there, I just closed in. I don't know what happened up in front of me, because I don't think I did anything different than any other laps. And I just caught. I just became blazing up like I you know, hit the turbo button on a video game or something. In reality, my lap time wasn't any faster. They just all must have done something to slow themselves down a little bit. So I've got the 35 behind me, and then the 610 is still in front of me. And the 610, you know, he's basically trying to recover with me because he was in uh, that first lap mishap. So we both, you know, have the same deficit to deal with. But I'm going to try to pay attention this time around and see how many laps we have. I think we're probably down to about two laps left in the race. I was surprised that I didn't get as tired feeling as I thought I might because this is long. I mean, this is 20 minutes or so of almost continual turning. There it is, folks. The white, la the, the white flag. This is the last lap. a little cushion on the 35 and again uh, you know I, I'm able to freight train on through here and start to close just a hair on these guys and really boy they, they came way into, into focus right there so I'm, uh, you know I'm like holy smokes I'm back in it you know maybe something's gonna happen I know the 610 is really wanting to get through these two fellas or these three fellas in front of him and uh, you know you never know what's gonna happen Oh, so the the twelve that one uh that one curb did not treat him right. He touched that curb and it just threw his back end way up in the air and away he went. And so then I see, you know, like I said, two of those guys up in front of the six ten, I, I know those guys fairly decently. I've raced them quite a few times back in the Cincinnati area and I was just hoping I could try to race with them a little bit, but it never did quite catch up to him. And that folks is the end of it. That is my 2022 CKNA Grands experience right there. I had a hell of a good time. I will be back next year. We will see all of you at the next video, and have a good one. Oh, I forgot to mention that I finished 26th. So, as I said, have a good one. Make sure to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.